Uh, Monday on the Audible. Kimbo Camper, John Conjemi with you. And one of those days, John, where you, you feel like, boy, it was right, it was right, right there, there in the palm, right in the palm of your hand. All you had to do was reach up and pluck the apple from the tree. And and you come up a little short. Uh, you know, the, these these games, these I don't know about you, but you know, these days, these days, uh, the hardest days for me after playing a game and losing, certainly right after the game, but the worst was the morning after, after. when you wake up. As soon as you wake up, it's like someone just he's like hit with a well, you hit with a sledgehammer. You're running through all those plays yeah. in your head. The the all, what is all the reality smacks you right in the face. Absolutely, and now you've got to try to uh, flush yeah. that, those yeah. memories away because you have to get ready for another game. But you're right; it's the next day or that night into the next day yeah. where you're kind of tossing and turning, going over about field position and penalties and yeah. drops and and mistakes and you know uh, interceptions yeah. or fumbles. You're, you're going through the whole game and probably. 30 to 45 second uh, snapshots. Yeah. And you want to be able to erase it, but the only way you can is to get back on the practice field and get yeah. ready for the next game and try to improve on those things. Yeah, so the Dolphins drop at 27-24 uh, to an Oakland Raider team that I, I tell you what, I, I got to give Der Derek Carr, really haven't seen him play in person. Uh, very, very impressive. Yeah. I, I mean, this guy, you know, and play, had a great year last year, broke his uh, foot or his ankle. Right before the playoffs, it really doomed the Raiders. But, uh, boy, I tell you, you talk about a guy that knows his receivers. I think half the passes he threw, he was throwing them before guys were coming out of their breaks and, and, and putting them right in their hands. And uh, an impressive performance by him. But, you know, John, as, as I said, I, I think this was a game when you look at it, Dolphins lose 27-24. Uh, they're four and four now. Uh, got to uh, Carolina next week on another primetime game Monday night. But, boy, you just think that the, this, this team – Played well enough in that game to win, to win the football yeah. game. I thought Jay Cutler was sharp. Uh, came out. I think he, I forget what his. I know at one point he was nine for nine. Well, he, he had one miss in the first half. Right. I mean, one incompletion in the yeah. first half, and the guy got rid of the football. He planted his feet, you know, firmly in the he was ground. He was aggressively. Able to, he was able to anticipate. Yep. He was able to find some windows down the field. He was able to find Thomas versus coverage. Finally, Adam Gase talked about that in his presser today yep. about finally getting the matchups you wanted on the outside. That uh, illuminated the tight end and quarterback yep. relationship. But uh, in Devontae Parker's presence back in the game, yep. uh, getting him back as a big body, had an incredible catch, one of the best catches the first yep. half uh, of the season in the NFL. And then the, the two-headed monster in the backfield, I think that's going to evolve mm -hmm. and make this offense a little bit more dynamic. You, you have uh, where you were last week, where you have a, a running back in the game when Jay Ajayi was a member of this team, where you know you're not going to throw it to him. Yep. And now you've got the opportunity where you spread out defenses and maybe give them a little bit more caution in, in terms of playing on their heels a little bit more yeah. because you don't know what you're going to do. And it, and it allows Jay Cutler the ability to get rid of the football. If he doesn't like what he sees down the field, he know he knows all he has to do is get it in the range of yeah. those guys, and they can make somebody miss and create a big play. Yeah, and I think one of the guys in the, uh, in, in his, in the coach's press conference just a few minutes ago, he just finished probably 10, 15 minutes ago, uh, but I think it brought up a pretty good question. And now when you evaluate uh, the running backs after a game uh, with Damian Williams, uh, with, um, and Kenyon with, with Kenyon Drake, uh, and if Sonoris Perry gets in and plays a little bit at some point. But do you evaluate him now from just total yards per scrimmage as base, other, other than just you know rushing yards? And, and, I, and I think that's a pretty legitimate thought when you look at these two guys because both can do both, can do both things. Uh, I think Damien's a guy that's going to catch more balls from uh, out of the backfield, give you more yardage there. But when you combine the two of them, I think they had I think they had a hundred and well over a hundred yards between pass receiving and, and rushing oh, when you yeah. put those two together. So when you look at production out of the running back position, I think you had to feel pretty good about where it was. You would like to see some of the first downs. Maybe pick where they were, you know, there they they would be, you know, second and nine, second and 11. You know, you'd like to get to that second and seven, at, at least second and six, maybe on some of those. And I think that's certainly something they're going to work out. But certainly with certainly with Kenyon, you saw, you know, when, when he broke the run, you saw his explosiveness, yeah. the speed, the ability to get around the corner, put a nice straight arm on a guy. And, and so some toughness also. So I think as I think as those guys start to get a better feel for what they're doing, what the offense is going to provide for them, I think we're going to see a little more out of those guys. And I think it's I think it's going to be a very intriguing 
uh, duo back there to watch for the remainder of the season. Well, I think the way I'm approaching the running back situation is take the nameplates off yep. and don't worry about who's in the game and yep. what situation because both guys can do everything. Yep. Both guys can be elusive at the line of scrimmage. They can run the football in between the tackles, and they can catch it and make you miss in space. Yep. So it doesn't matter for me. If it's Damian, it's Damian. If it's Kenyon, it's Kenyon. If it's Sonoris, it's him. Yep. So don't worry about the nameplate or the number. Worry about the overall production you're getting from that position and how it how it allows Jay Cutler and company and how it allows the yep. offensive line to do their jobs more consistently, stay away from the 11 penalties yep. and, and correct those things. And now you've got more yardage because, quite frankly, there were some explosive plays that were They'll taken back, back off the yeah. table from the Miami Dolphins and, and, and that you, really and, hindered their and performance. You can, look at the, you can look at the penalty yards. I think it was 107 yards in penalties. Yeah. But but you you add, you you those add the plays. difference add the difference between the big plays Your that were taken position. away from you field position yeah. all those times. John, th- this was a game I think we talked about talked about a little earlier on that you really felt like this was a game after watching it that uh, it, it was there for them. They had the opportunity. They played well enough on both sides of the football. Uh, and to me, there were three things, three factors in this game that really made the difference between losing. And one was the penalties. Yeah. And the penalties were by, but to me, far and away the biggest reason the Dolphins didn't win this game. Just because you talked about, it. not only is it penalty yards, but you take away the yards when that they you occurred, just gained, right? the big plays, take away the yards when you're, and now instead of being, now instead of having a first down at the twenty, to, at the twenty, now now you're now you're at the thirty-five or forty. Right. You know, and you got second and ten, or right. second and twenty, right? And, and and then you have nowhere to go there. So, so that's one thing. The other, the other thing, uh, what was their tight end? Jared Cook just just really took advantage of the Dolphins, took advantage of a soft zone back there. I think Coach Gay said, you know, there's only one time that on the passes he caught that they were in man to man coverage. Right. Every other time it was zone coverage. Um, so he had eight for 126, 15.8 yards average per he catch. Had six for 113 yeah, in the first in half. In the first half, right? Um, and the other thing I thought, John, that did really hurt this football team early on, I think they fixed, I think they cleared it up in the second half, was when the, they got the Raiders in third, they played great defense yeah. early in the game on first downs, put them in third and long. I think they went, I think I, I, think I had it at one point, they went uh, on one drive, they were third and. Um, Oh, it was 25. So, yeah, they're it was third, third, and long, it was, third and long, third and nine, they completed one. They're third well, how, and 26 on one, first and 25. And they make that one and turn it into points. And then third and 26, yeah. and they scored and turned that into points. So the the first, the, 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 the third and long defense hurt them, uh, the tight end hurt them, and uh, penalties hurt right. them. I think those are the three things. Usually it's kind of a multiple of things, but to me, I think other than that, I think they played well enough to win that football game, and that's what makes it. That's what really gnaws at you when you know just how close you were to to picking up that fifth win of the season. And, Bo, I totally agree with those points. And I'll add in one more. Normally we talk about sudden change on defense when you have a turnover. We had sudden Sudden change change on on offense. offense. You know, you have the onside kick that's successful. You get great field position. You get nada out of it. You have a great individual effort started by Dominic and Sue. And then there are other 10 guys, as Coach said, played with their hair on fire. They get the the turnover, and you get nothing out of that. I think that's deflating to a – to a football team yep. at some point because you're presenting the offense with opportunities and it's right out there. You got 50 yards, you got 40 yards yep. to go to get points, to get touchdowns, or even 25 yards to get a field goal. You get nothing yep. out of those, and, and I think that that becomes deflating. At you you look at the score of the game, 27-24. If I'm not incorrect, I believe there were three turnovers in the game: two by the Dolphins, or two two by the Raiders, one, one by, by the, the Dolphins, Dolphins. Right, and the Raiders turned one of those turnovers into seven points. That's the difference in the ball game. Yeah. You know, if the Dolphins take their turnovers, they get. And I counted, I counted an onside kick to me as a turnover. That is. You know, so you 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 take those turnovers, even if you put field goals on the board, like you said, you're you're you know, you're in you're in a better position right. and, and an opportunity to win the football game. So yeah, it was it's a tough one, tough one to swallow. But I'll give you this. I, I you know the the effort the tackling, the crispness, all those things were so much far and away better than what we were talking about a week ago after that Thursday night game in Baltimore. Right. I mean, it was night and day. And, John, I'm, I'm convinced that Thursday nights, it's, is hard. A, it's a bane on the National Football it's hard. League. And, look, you, you look at Buffalo. Buffalo is a good example. Buffalo was rolling. Buffalo was rolling. They got to go on the road to the, new, to the Jets, who's, not, you know, who's struggling, go on the road Thursday night, and they get spanked. In New York, I, I it wasn't been, close. I'm going to look back 
at, at all these Those Thursday games. games and see how many road games actually, how many road teams actually came out and won on Thursday night. And I wonder how long that affects that team. Right. Is it the next? Is there any carryover right. into the next week? Because those are things you, are tough to shake off. Yeah. You know, the Miami Dolphins are shut out on the road at Baltimore. You said the Buffalo Bills, they travel. It's not a long travel, but, to, but, it's, to, still but travel. it's still travel. It's still yeah. a day. Look, you still uh, got to get it, you know, get on, right. get on a bus, get to the airport. You do all there. those things. It right. may be an hour or two hour flight, but it's, get but the it's, tickets. A, but it's a six hour day. Get the family, yeah, right. do all the things yeah. that you're doing in a in a seven day week, and you, yeah. you cram it into a three day week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, but uh, you know, way it is. And now the Dolphins got to go to Carolina Monday for another month, another uh, national cha- nationally televised primetime game Monday night in Carolina. Carolina, very good football team. Going to be another great test for this team, and uh, see see how they can do. They got to look. They, you, you look at them right now at four and four, John. They, the, a team, an, an AFC team this year may get in with nine wins. Right. So if that's the criteria, somewhere, somewhere in these next five games, eight, eight you games, steal a you, you got you got to scrape out five wins. You have to out of these games if you want any chance to get to the postseason. And the good thing for the Miami Dolphins <clears throat> is they play Buffalo twice and, and they and play New England, England twice. twice. Yep. So you've got the AFC East right in the palm of your hand. Yep. If you can control your own destiny with those rivalry type games, you've got to steal Tampa Bay. You've got to steal maybe Carolina yep. on the road. Yep. Uh, Kansas City is going to be a tough. <laughs> Out, you, you, you know, you got, you got to be Christmas Buff, Eve. You got to beat Buffalo twice. You got to steal, steal one from New England. You got to steal one, and then you don't know where the other <clears throat> yep. two are going to come from, yep. but they're there on the schedule yep. to be had. You got Denver coming in yep. uh, to Hard Rock Stadium. You've got Carolina on the road, as yep. you mentioned, and then you've got Tampa, Tampa Bay home, coming yep. in. So there are games there that if the Dolphins play the way they played last night, I don't think it was a poor performance no. by any stretch no. by the Miami Dolphins overcoming 11 penalties. And, and being able to be in the game. Yeah. You know, you just need to make a couple more plays on both yeah. sides of the football that are difference makers, you know, explosive plays one way or the other that make a difference not only at that point in the game, but on the scoreboard. Yeah. That's where that's what we're missing. I'll tell you right the now. other thing. I, I got to give you got to give the Raiders credit for their uh, their defensive game plan because they're out. They got three cornerbacks out. I know. They're out of the game. You got Sean Smith on the other corner, who's a lazy cornerback. You know, he's, he's been around a long time, right. play, but he tends to get lazy and you can beat him over there. But they play it too deep all day long. You can't throw the ball downfield. You him. give you the underneath. Hey, we'll give you the underneath. We'll tackle you. Try to beat and us that's that old Look, instead of beating us on two play drives, you're going to have to put eight 12. or nine plays together, 12 plays together. And, and usually when that happens, someone's going to make a mistake. And, and they try did. To capitalize. And, the, and that's, that's where exactly the penalties, yep. you know, kind of came into play <clears throat> yep. for the Dolphins. That's where they were able to stub their foot. And, and Oakland just kind of said, you know, let's play a little loose. Yep. Let's play. Give them, give them all that. <clears throat> come up and tackle, as you said. But don't give them the three-play, 70-yard drive yep. where it's 7 nothing, or it ties the game at 14 or it gets their crowd back into the game. Yep. It was more of a lull you to sleep, let you mess up, and see where we, where we yeah. are in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So, well, anyway, that's where the Dolphins are, 4-4. Four and four. Carolina coming up next Monday. You move on from there. Let's go ahead and get some questions on here. Facebook, uh, Ignashka uh, Kaleska. Hey, Bo, glad they're working the fullback position back in the scheme. Did you see it being more successful? Do you see it being more successful in the future? I kind of like they put Marquise Gray Marquise, back yeah. there. Uh, gave him the football, got the first down for you. And... Look, I, I've I'm kind of been pining for a fullback. I watched you. Know, you watch. I watched some of the games yesterday. You see guys with fullbacks in there, and what I don't know. There's a is there's that? a warm feeling in there when you got a fullback. But I think with a guy like Marquise Gray, he can do a little bit of a lot of different things. I, I think he's a nice. I, I like to see him back there. I was happy to see him back there. I was happy to see him hand him the football. Well, they gave it to him. They <clears> lined <throat> him up there. They put him back at his tight end position. Yeah. They kind of moved him around. It gives you some flexibility and play call. I think a couple games ago, I think we put Malaluga back there and, and let him block uh, yeah. in the game there. So. They got a couple options there, and, and I and I like, you know, I think it's a good situation because you don't have to give a roster spot to a true fullback if you got a couple guys or one guy in particular that's a, like a like a guy like Marquise Gray that when you want that you can bring him in right. and give him the opportunity. So I, I think it's a, I think it's a nice addition to what they're doing. El Chapo Jr. How can you correct the penalties? Well, look, I, here's what I don't understand: they have officials out on the field every, every day. single practice. When they play every day, every time they step on the field, there's officials back there. I remember in my during my career, I don't think we had officials. I think maybe towards the end of my career, but the coaches always, you right. know, all, coaches always took care of penalties. And I know this: if you if you if you if you had a penalty in practice, it was treated it was treated at that point the same as if you got a penalty in a game situation. Because you know there's there's the belief that you're going to play the way you practice. Right. If you get away with them in practice. 
you're 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 not gonna you're not you're not gonna change your colors when the game rolls around. So you got to do it in practice, and you got to make there. There's got to be. There's got to, I don't want to say a penalty be paid, but there has to be knowledge. You know, that, that guy, you God damn it, you can't do that. You, you, you know, you, you got to let them know that this is not the way we're going to get the job done. And, and it, it's reflective of. Well, it's I, the little I, things. It's the yeah. little things that beat the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, being out, uh, out it wasn't physical, physical. No. Uh, you know, on the line of scrimmage. They weren't or, out physical. They, they weren't out scheme. It, it wasn't that, was yeah, they were that. smarter than the Miami Dolphins right, and no. being able to come in and play a two-shell defense and let them, you know, take yeah. little bits and pieces and not give them the big play. It was the penalties directly that the hidden yardage in this game that yeah. was lost by the Miami Dolphins has to be close to 150 yards. Yeah. It has yeah. to be. Yes. And, and that's a lot of points. That's a lot of opportunities that the Miami Dolphins should be swinging at the fences yep. and trying to score touchdowns and, and field goal opportunities yep. that were taken away and turned into punts. Yeah, I, I know this. You know, and, and look, my frame of reference is, is one guy. I played for Don Shula, and, you know, greatest coach of all time in the National Football League. So I'm kind of jaded with my references uh, to that. But I know this. When we, when if if you if, were scared to if, make a penalty. If, if, at I, practice. if I had a penalty, well, at practice, yeah. yes, but in a game, if I if, if I grabbed a guy's face mask that that kept the drive going, the last thing I want to do is come over right. to our sideline. Right. And I think everyone you played with say, you know what? I'd rather go to the other team's sideline <laughs> than our sideline after a play like that because you're going to hear from it. Right. You're going to hear about it in no uncertain terms that we're not going to allow this to happen. Yeah. And oh, by the way. I think through his, I think his entire career, that all were one of the they least were, penalized teams. They're in always the at the top. Always of the at list. the top. Yeah, always and that's the one top. thing that you know it's really uncharacteristic of the Dolphins yeah. this year. Even you know with a four and four record being five hundred, they only had a couple of games where they've been out of skew. Yeah, you know this particular game, it was penalty for penalty. I yeah. mean the Raiders had ten penalties yes. for over yeah. hundred yards as well. But, but their penalties didn't. They they, they weren't. You know they, they they didn't they didn't blow up drives their penalties. Well, they That's, overcame them. Yes, they they a lot. You know, first and twenty five should not then, turn no. in to points no. against the Miami Dolphins. No. The Raiders overcame their penalties yep. and turned them into points. The Dolphins did not. Yeah. Uh, black man game. Uh, what are the Finns going to have to do? Well, let me see. I missed uh, when I would correct. Uh, okay. Can't miss black man game. Black man game. What are the Finns going to have to do to turn things around? Well, look, I, 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 you know, you, you may, you may not believe me, you, you may not agree with me, but I thought yesterday was a, a big step forward for this team. I thought after the way they played on Thursday, and I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm still convinced that Thursday nights is it's a horrendous thing for the league, and it haunts those teams that have to go on the road when you got to go play there. You almost take what they do on Thursday night on the road and throw it out yeah. as just an outlander, an, an outlier. It just, it, it's so, so tough and so hard to do. Um, but I think I think from that Thursday to last night, I was very pleased with the way they played, with their their effort, with their energy, with all the things that you need to do to play well and to be successful. I thought they had that going for them. The only so thing the just, Dolphins didn't do was win last yeah, night. Yeah, that's they, it. They put themselves in position to win a football game. And as Adam <clears throat> Gase talked about earlier, Bo, how many times have the Dolphins in the last year and a half won games of under right, exactly. seven yep. or less or under three or less? This yep. is one of the outliers yep. that the, they didn't find a way to win. Yep. So I, I think they did a lot of really good things. They had to build on those things and, and take away the penalties, and you're in a better position to win football yep. games. Sound man, one, two, three. Big shout-out to John Denny. 200 games by John yeah, Denny. Only awesome. Jason Taylor and Dan, Dan. Marino uh, can uh, can claim that. And here's a guy that, you know, I was talking to uh, uh, to Darren Rizzi about him when we were doing uh, the coaches show the other day. And he says, you know what, this guy keeps him – he's so prepared, always works. He's telling me – he's a long snapper, yeah. right? Yeah. Two weeks after the season's over, he says he's already back in here working out, and, and he's an athletic guy. And uh, he said, "Look, the guy can play for twenty five years great if he wants." For John, the, man. Only, the only his biggest nemesis is not his age or his or his physical condition. It's a salary. It, it's minimum wage because all you know, there are there are minimum wage guys, but his minimum wage now is probably 1. Up to 9. two point two million or whatever it is. You know, once it gets to the point, they're like, ah, you know, I don't we, know. But I don't know. But that's but, great. That's a great. Yeah, it's great. Great for that's him. Right. And congratulations to John Danny. I saw his wife and and kids out there with his jersey on down the that's field. Cool. That, that was pretty cool. So so good for him. Anthony Martinez, Bo, do you see us trying to sign Brandon Albert again? No. I I, I would I would I, I could imagine what shape Brandon Albert is in right now. And, and if you I think if you if Brandon Albert was again, I love Brandon Albert on this football team, believe me. But if you'd assign sign him right now, it would take a month 
to have him ready to play, I think. Because I don't know that I don't believe that Brandon Albert's down there running sprints and doing all those types of well, things. I think right he's now. Retired, retired. But I think what you he get here, it. I think what you're going to get is this. I think you're going to get Ted Larson steps into that guard position this week, and, and I think that um, Jesse Jesse Davis kicks, kicks out, out to the to the right tackle because I don't think that Juwan uh, is going to be ready based on what the way it looked and the way he was going about in a way the way guys were talking to him on the sideline, I don't think he's going to be ready. So I think it's going to be Jesse Davis at the right tackle position, and I think it's going to be um, Larson, Ted Larson at, at, the, at the left guard. Yeah, I agree uh, with and you. see how things go that way. I agree with you. But I, I don't think Brandon Albert, again, one of my favorite, one of the favorite players I've had, I've seen on the Dolphins over the time I've been covering this football team. And uh, I'd love to have him around, but I just don't think he's the guy right now. Vasily Devros, uh, talked about a few days ago, we notoriously have the issues against tight ends. Cook had a game, and, and the Raiders knew it. Well, I, tell you, I tell you, the guy made some great – he made some good catches. And the, and the really, timing of the passes, yeah. even when the pressure was coming in on, yeah. on Derek Carr, he was able quickly. to anticipate, yeah. get it close – and there was a, a big distance yeah. in, in a couple of zone coverages between where we had a yeah. linebacker or a safety compared to where yeah. Cook was catching the football. Look, this is a this has been this has been a, a, a thorn in my side for a long Hands time. Hands on on the tight end. Just get hit the tight. You, you know, stand, look. It, even in the zone situation, you put a linebacker over the tight end and you jam him and jam and jam. You don't. You can get. You'll get to your zone eventually, but you're taking this guy. Away. Out of the play, out of the play because the time is out now. But it's just something, and I've I've talked to coaches, I've talked to virtually every coach has come through, and they go, "Oh, you know what? These guys are a lot more athletic than when you played." I go, "Wait a minute! If your tight ends are more athletic, then it only leads you, leads you to believe that the, the linebackers should be more athletic too." Then <laughs> I think so. And I don't know. All I know is I when I was lined up as an outside linebacker playing, I was playing against Russ Francis, Dave Casper, yeah. Jerome Barkham. Uh, Raymond Chester, uh, you know, and I think if you look back at the records, those guys were all pretty good and pretty athletic right. tight ends in the league at that time. So I, I don't, but I just think that I just think teams don't think it's important. You know, if you don't think it's important, if you don't emphasize it to your players that it's important, then it's not going to be important to them. I know this, the, the league I grew up in, the team I grew up on in, in the National Football League. The first thing that was paramount to me, you better jam that tight end before you go get in your coverage. And I think that's led to basketball players playing tight end yep. because they're not used they don't to get contact. Up. They yeah. don't get beat yeah. up at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. So it's just like running like a wide receiver yeah. at the tight end position. It allowed them to accelerate a lot faster, get a lot more confidence, yeah. and they know they're not going to get their head taken off every yeah. play. Yep, yeah, no doubt. Uh, Periscope uh, hooked up Joe. We have the third toughest schedule for the remainder of the year. Your thoughts? Well, look, the schedule schedule's is. a schedule, man. What are you going to do? You can't you can't change it. But look, I always say I always say this, you know, especially these days. The 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 schedule and the teams in the National Football League, it's a fluid thing week to week. Best example you can look at is Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers. That's right. Everybody looked at Green Bay on their schedule and said, That's oh, check a tough that. out. That's a loss. That's a check loss. that as a loss. Check that as a loss. Now, all of a sudden, it went from check it off as a loss to, hey, that's a win for us. That's a win now. Well, so, so we're probably doing the same thing when you take a look at Tampa Bay. First yep. week, that was, a, that was a big question yep. mark coming into Hard Rock Stadium. Now, you look at Tampa Bay and they don't yeah, threaten so you. Much so. you know, yeah. they're, not, they're not the team you thought they right. might be. So that game kind of leans in your favor. Yep. So there's a couple of games. Same with Denver. Denver yeah. was a very tough out in August. Yeah. Now, not so much, well, especially look, look, coming on the road. Look how many teams felt like the Giants were going to be a, a world Super Bowl. Beaters, you know, that's right. A, a con, be able to win that conference, uh, you know, be able to win that, win the division, and, and maybe get to a conference yeah. championship. Uh, and, and look what's happening. So you, so you just don't know. I know we know a little more more now because they're eight or nine games into the season, and you can kind of see what teams have done. But one injury to any one player on, on any one team – Changes everything, so I really don't look at it. I just look at a week to week and t- flip that the other way. I'm sure teams are looking at the Dolphins. Wait a minute, oh, no Tannehill, oh, no you, no Ajayi. Yeah, right. You got injuries on the line yeah. of scrimmage. You've got you know a mystery yeah. at, at, at guard. You don't know what you're going to get. So they're, they're saying the same things well, all uh, around. Well, the you know they better start saying, well, you know, look, those guys got T.J. McDonald coming back. Well, you hope so, yeah. And they got Ted Larson, you know, that's coming in there. And I don't know what Ted's going to do. He's been out for you know eight games, so let, you know we'll, we'll wait and see. But you know, those you, are guys, those are reinforcements. Devontae back. Instead of couple, guys going right. out, you got guys, guys coming, coming back. back in, right. You know, and so, you know, that, that, like that kind of good. Yeah, exactly. Well. They tried to pull me out, yeah. tried to get, keep me out, and they keep <laughs> pulling me back in. Uh, I'm for Finns. Why didn't they go along to Parker more in the second half? Well, you know, Coach Gaze talked about it in his press conference. He said, look, they're playing too deep. They, they, they had a good defensive scheme. We, we know our secondary is, is beat up. 
Uh, the best thing we can do is play a two deep zone, not let them beat us over the top. If they want to threaten us down the field, we'll go up after the football and, 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 and they, and if they want to beat us, beat us underneath. And that's right. exactly what happened in the foot. That's exactly where the game played out. Now, late in the game, when you got to throw the ball deep, it was, it was too deep and you yeah. took a heck of a throw and one of the best catches of, in of the National year. football right. league of the, in the year right. to, to get the ball downfield. Yeah, no doubt. So. You know that that's and, and look. I think I went in the game thinking, man, this is a, this is an opportunity with him coming to back to really get the ball downfield right. to really take take advantage of him. But you know they 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 you know they they're not. Uh, these guys are pretty smart on the other side of the on the other side of the field that you're playing against. Uh, Duck Dog eleven oh four. Bo Bo, why was Shula's team so disciplined and always at least penalized? Because it mattered, you yeah. know. Because I mean, he that was the edge. That that, that was, was it. one it, of the it, edges. It mattered. It mattered. That you that you you didn't didn't get penalties, and, and and like I said, when you came off the field, if you any penalty that you made, you got ripped for, and and I mean, you know, and sometimes it, it you didn't you don't want to hear it. I mean, because it was it, the ripping got pretty, you know, pretty bad at times. But that's why you know it, it's you know to me it's it's, it's like disciplining your kids, uh, right? Yes. You got your kids. Kids do something wrong. And you go, oh, oh, don't worry. He won't. I told Johnny he won't do it again. He won't do it again. Boom. Then he does it again. Oh, John, you can't do that, you know, and he does Why is it again. It always Johnny, right? I, I don't know. It's just a name that comes up. <laughs> I, 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 I was going back to the dirty Johnny. I, said, I, I know the dirty were. Johnny stories. I you know, know you that, that's right. You know what I think that adds to that too, Bo, is the way the offenses are today yeah. it, in youth football, high school football, college, and even some in, some, yeah. in the pros. Everything's moving so fast. Yeah. There's no time for corrections. It no, almost no, seems like no, no, no. So you're going and you're you're going. Yeah. I, don't worry about. It. We'll get it back yeah, we'll get, on another yeah, passing yeah, yeah. play. We're gonna go no huddle and we'll get yeah. it all back. You know. So I don't think there's the attention to yeah. detail in certain aspects to to focus in on getting gaining that yeah. edge in terms of being disciplined. I, I think you you miss a little bit of. I that. I give you the other thing too on, on the game last night, and like we talked, you know, penalties played a huge role against the Dolphins in that game. But some of those penalties were some shitty calls too. Oh, big time! You know, there there, there were some Jarvis's, calls. Jarvis's uh, there were some calls holding that, on the outside R- R- was uh, Rashad. Rashad's, Rashad's call. Yeah, there was face some mask, bad. There was another holding up. call. It might have been on, on Jesse. I yeah. can't remember. That was kind of he yeah, locked very, him up, and put iffy, him down, yeah, iffy, and yeah. it didn't look like so, holding to so me. So let's let's not you know. I mean, you know, but look, yeah, every but you know they were called. They affected you, right. and that's the way. But look, it's just you just got to know that. You know, you got to know that there's a there, there's a there's an effect that the cause here and it affects this and there well, and there's a and there's a price to be paid. We for talked it. about o- Oakland overcoming penalties. Yeah, you get the Rashad personal foul yeah. that was very questionable. You, you, the next play X gets a a, a pi yeah. in the end zone. Right. The Raiders go from about the 45 yard right. line down to, to the, the three yeah. or the one. Three, yeah. So it's one of those things where the the hidden yardage in games, you don't notice it as a fan. Yeah. But I guarantee you both staffs are going back and the Miami Dolphins staff are go, are saying to themselves, there's 160 some yards yeah. of lost yardage Left on the field. On the field and, and the Raiders are saying we gained yeah. A certain amount, getting a, a first and twenty-five into points, getting easy forty-five yards yep. on two plays of penalties. There's some hidden yardage in there that you just don't really pay attention to, and you take for granted that cost teams games yep. in the National Football League. Daniel Allen Nye off of Facebook. Do we still have a chance of playoffs with us being in a division so close together? Well, look, you play Buffalo twice. New England. You play New England twice. If you could sweep those two teams, and you're talking about division play, you're going to get you're you're going to be where in you because be. you're going to pick up a win somewhere along the way. Yeah. And whether it's a wild card, you probably win the division. If you could sweep those teams, you sweep both of those, you end up winning the division. Yeah, you're, and, you're and then you're, you're tied or winning it. Yeah, one exactly, of the two. exactly. Pretty close to it. So uh, that, that's all you got to do. You just got to you know you just got to beat the guys in front of you. That's it. King Edlin, uh, T.J. McDonald starts this week. What type of impact do you expect? I think he's going to have a huge impact. I, I remember interviewing him after the last preseason game and saying, uh, you know, what's it going to be like when you come back? He goes, I'm, a, I'm, I'm ready to go right now. And believe me, when I come back, I'm going to be 100% and I'm going. I'm going after people. If we had t- taken a poll on who the two of the most impactful players on defense or and on yeah. offense af- after the preseason – T.J. McDonald yep. would have been on the list, definitely. You know, with William Hayes and, yep. and Timmons. Yeah. Okay. And on offense, it would have been Ted Larson solidifying yep. the spot right. on the line to make that whole unit cohesive. Yeah. He would have been right on the list on the offensive side. Yeah. So you've got two guys coming back that hopefully can make that big impact. You, know, you, you, you I just look at this. When you look at T.J. McDonald. They signed him as a free agent. <laughs> 
He's, they know he's got an eight-game suspension. Just, he goes through the preseason right. game, goes through plays in two preseason games, and then they extend, extend his them. contract. It's and they know, good. They know he's not going to play for eight we'll games. We'll see you in November. That's, 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 yeah. that, that tells you a little bit about the impact that they're expecting from uh, T.J. McDonald. Uh, do you think the Panthers will implement the same defensive game plan as as the Raiders? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, teams – Teams aren't going to, you know, te- you know, they say it's a copycat league, but, you know, you're not going to change. Your, I don't think you, the Raiders would have done that had their corners no. been healthy. Had their corners been healthy, they'd have played that game completely right. different. They might have been able to get more man, pressure yes. in the pocket yeah. earlier than when they did and, and allowed Julius Thomas to get some big yeah. plays out on a linebacker, yeah. you know, later in the game. Yeah. They would have brought some heat, I think. Anthony Shake uh, Felicio from Facebook. Boy, you think uh, should Miami play double running backs, Drake and Williams set? Uh, you know, I don't know. They they want to play three and four wide receivers. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, it's, it's tough to put two backs in there. I, I think maybe in a situation maybe where you where it's a first down and you want to put you two can guys motion back somebody there and you out, can motion one right. guy out and, right. and try to get a mismatch. But I don't think in a situation where look if it's a passing situation, you you you, you like that still you like that one of those backs in there, but right. you'd rather have those receivers, yeah. those wide receivers out there, uh, be the guys. <clears throat> uh, John Beals from Facebook. Do you think they'll be drafting a bruising running back next year? You know, let's worry about that next year. I, I, we're eight games into the season, got eight games to go, and I'm not, I'm not. Uh, look, we're not. Who, who, look, you know, by the end of by the end of the, the by the end of the season, you may be looking at Kenyon Drake. Oh, wow, what a what a steal that guy was! That's right. You know, he's got look, he got 600 yards in in, in, in eight, eight games, games or something like that. So who knows? I, I mean, until you until you see what these guys. That was the first game these guys have each had a chance to play and get multiple carries that they knew they were going to get right. and not, you know, one here. Minus the fumble. One here. I, I thought the backs yeah. played a, a yeah. great game. Yeah. I thought they were solid. Yep. Uh, last one here. Hey, Bo, do you think uh, this is from Courtney and NJ11 Periscope. Hey, Bo, do you think the Dolphins can get over the hump of winning on the national stage? Well, they're 0 for 2 back-to-back weeks. Love to steal one on the road it, on Monday Night Football. It would be great to steal one in Carolina. That, that would be... Look, that, that would make up uh, that that'd be a nice make, up make for, a nice makeup game, that game to make right. up for this game this last week. Yeah, at, uh, uh, the disappointment of this one. But look, Carolina at Good home team. not going to be easy. Uh, McCaffrey's playing well for them. Uh, they're they're just a very good football. It would be team. a great game again, Bo, for the yeah. defense to show up large. Yes, you know, just show up large and, and really stymie Cam Newton yeah. and, and all the explosiveness yeah. that they have. Remember, uh, Benjamin's gone on the yeah. outside, yeah. so you've got an opportunity if you can shut down Newton and you can shut down the running yeah. game, force those guys to, to make plays through the air. That defense, if the Dolphins' defense can play a game where they don't allow that explosive yeah. play. And the offense keeps, you know, accelerating yep. their growth. It sh- we should be in the game. Look, they got opportunity, but uh, a win on Monday would go a long way towards setting the stage uh, for the second half of this yeah. season for this football team. So, uh, but we'll see. Look, they got to go. Another again. Uh, uh, so here we are, four and four. Carolina on Monday. Dolphins 27-24. Tough loss last night uh, against the Oakland Raiders in, in the uh, uh, in, in the conference too, and that 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 stings a little bit when you. When you do that, but uh, hey, look, it's it's kind of pull up your bootstraps this week, get after, uh, it. and get after it, and get ready for Carolina. You got some some uh, some reinforcements coming back into you. That should help a little bit. Hopefully, Cutler comes back and plays away and throws the ball away. Right. But look, you got some concerns. I got some. I'm still going to wait. I still want to say wait and see with Sue this week because look, he was hurt. Yeah, he was hurt, and that, that's a that's tough a tough injury. sob, man. He walked off the field and walked. I don't even think even I don't think the doctor. I didn't, I didn't even look doctor, at him. I don't even think let, let the doctors look at him. I think he walked in the locker room, <laughs> walked around the locker room once, tried to say, "I'm fine," and yeah, came right back out. and walked right back out in the yeah. field. And doctors just going, "Oh, whatever," you know. You tell him. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly it. That's exactly hey, what happened. Coach, what do you think? I don't know. You, you ask him. him. I don't know. I don't want to ask him. I don't want to say anything That's to right. him. It was one of those times. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for the program today, John. Always a pleasure, man. Thank you very much. We'll be back on Wednesday. We'll find out what's going on then. Until then, have a good couple of days. We'll see you.